Sarah Murray, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Joining us now to discuss Cliff Albright. He's the co-founder of the Black Voters Matter Fund. That's a progressive group that seeks to expand black voting. Cliff, thanks for joining us. We, we know Democrats blocked this voting bill in Texas, at least for now, by, by leaving and denying the legislative body a quorum. What role did organizations, organizations such as yours have in convincing these Democratic uh, legislators um, that this was necessary to do? Yeah, thanks, Jake. I mean, first and foremost, it was a sustained campaign that involved a, a number of strategies and a wide coalition of organizations, many of whom have been building power in the state of Texas for years now. After all, that's the reason why we're even seeing this voter suppression in Texas is because they know that the numbers of black and brown voters and the work of these organizations has been increasing. So they involved and, and we we expanded some of the work that we did in Georgia with the corporate accountability campaign, asking corporations to get involved. We brought some of our lessons learned from Georgia to Texas, uh, combined that with some of the things that they were already doing, already doing patch through calls to legislators, already mobilizing people in the communities, started doing more direct actions, not just at the at the Capitol, but even at some of the businesses like AT&T. So it was a wide number of strategies that were involved in a great coalition of organizations, which set the stage for the Democratic uh, members of the House to do what they did, which was an incredible act of courage. And Cliff, you say that there are direct connections to some of these new voting bills in some states and Jim Crow laws. What's your response when some people hear that language and they say, you know, using such stark language risks trivializing the horror of Jim Crow laws? What do you say to them? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. At the end of the day, when we think about Jim Crow, we often think about the, the whites only, the, the blacks only, the, the fountains, the public accommodation signs, right? What people forget, though, is that when it came to voting, you didn't see the whites only signs, right? When it came to voting, what Jim Crow looked like was things that was technically race neutral, right? It wasn't just black people. The laws didn't say only black people have to take a literacy test. The laws didn't say that only black people had to pay a poll tax, right? These were things that technically all voters had to do, but we knew that they were targeted to black voters. That's what voting Jim Crow looked like. That's exactly what's taking place right now, where we've got a whole series of provisions which are aimed directly at black and brown voters. In the case of Texas, you've got a, a whole string of provisions that are aimed technically at really at one county, Houston Harris County. What, is, what does Houston happen to have in common with places like Atlanta and Fulton County and places like Detroit, Michigan, where we know Trump and the Republicans directed a lot of their uh, a lot of their anger, right? It's black and brown voters. In fact, the very purpose of this Texas legislation, the House version at least, included language that came out of the Jim Crow Constitution, language that said that the purpose was to protect the integrity, the purity, I'm sorry, the purity of the ballot. That was Jim Crow language, and that was in this legislation. They eventually took it out but it reveals what their true intentions were. One of the provisions uh, that a lot of critics of the legislation point to as targeting black voters uh, is the provision that would have required that Sunday early voting could not start until 1 p.m. And, and Democrats say that would hurt the events that are called souls to the polls, uh, popular in particular with black churches where people go to vote right after church. Now, Republicans, when asked about this in the last day or so, they say it was just a typo. They didn't mean to say 1 p.m. They meant to say 11 a.m. Take a listen. So 11 a.m., can you, can you back up oh, yeah. what State Rep. Clardy uh, said? I just want oh, to confirm this. 11, uh, 11 a.m., if there's any limit at all. We want to make sure people are not limited on what they can do for souls to the polls. Okay, so, I mean, was that an error? That was added over in the House, and I'll defer to my House colleagues on the details. They say it was a typo. I'll take their word for it. Do you take their word for it? Do you think it was a typo? No, I, I don't think it was a typo at all, nor do I think that any of the dozens of other provisions in this bill that directly attack black voters are typos as well. Um, keep in mind that in the Georgia bill, we saw a similar attack on, on Sunday voting on the uh, souls to the polls in Georgia. This is a strategy that we're seeing in state after state the same way that provisions such as those that allow that make it easier to overturn an election is a provision that we're seeing in state by state. 
it's, it's, it would be too coincidental that there just happened to be a whole bunch of typos that all have the same impact of limiting black and brown voters. And we're seeing this across multiple states. And by the way, that you also have the Heritage Action um, who admitted that they've been behind inserting some of this language. In fact, sometimes writing entire laws for these states that are trying to uh, replicate and duplicate voter suppression all across the country. Cliff Albright, thanks so much for joining us. Stay in touch, please. Thank you, Jake.